the final weekend of April, Maryland head coach Michael Loxley has plenty to be excited about, including his returning QB, Talia Tungavailoa, who we get to watch today in this annual red-white game in College Park. Should be a blast to culminate spring practice for the Terps. Again, with much to be excited about on the horizon here at CQ Stadium. Welcome you inside, Jake Butt, Jason Ross Jr. Elise Menneker will join us on the sidelines shortly. Jake, the last time we saw Maryland head coach Michael Loxley, he was covered and drenched in mayonnaise after winning the Duke's Mayo Bowl. Again, there was a beaming smile on his face. No reason why that happiness can't continue into the upcoming season. And that was my takeaway from our conversations with Coach Loxley and his staff. This program is forward looking. As good as last year was, I think they felt they still left some meat on the bone. And now the conversation is not just about coming close, but how can you compete with the best big teams in the Big Ten? Anytime those are your goals, you better have the quarterback position figured out. And they have their guy in Talia Tugavailoa, one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten Conference, has virtually rewritten the Maryland re record book. And a, he has a deep receiver room to spread the ball around to. Some guys returning, some new additions in the transfer portal, a talented plethora of running backs. So this offense should be explosive once again. On the defensive side of the ball, I just have my eyes on two areas. One is eliminating the big play and to complement that, if you want to eliminate the big play, generating some type of pass rush. Two important factors. Look at the all Big Ten returning players this season. Plenty around Tunga Vailoa. That's right. Three of your top four leading receivers, your top four tacklers on defense. They're ready to go out there and make a run here in the Big Ten. Well, again, plenty to be excited about trying to build off last season's eight win campaign. They're dancing towards the end of spring here in College Park. We'll have more coming up on Big Ten Network. We'll take a look at our spring game format today here in College Park. Traditional scoring, normal clock in the first half. Some running clock potentially in the second half. First team offense will take on first team defense. And second team offense will take on second team defense. Let's send it down to Elise which with Coach. Coach, coming off a season, eight wins, another bowl win. I know you like to look ahead, so let's look at the spring game today. What are you going to look for from your team? First thing, stay healthy, Lisa. There's nothing more nerve-wracking than knowing that you got to play a game and you want to get out as clean as possible. As I told both red and white teams, the big thing I want to see is run, block, catch, throw, and the fundamentals of the game. We're not going to try to out-scheme anybody today. Give these young players and some of the returning guys opportunities to kind of showcase some things and start uh, identifying playmakers as we work into the uh, uh, summer camp. Returning guys, your quarterback is one of those. What does he mean to this program? Man, he, he's been a big part of where we are, uh, and thankfully he'll continue to be a big part of where we're going. I mean, the, the kid has come here and elevated everything around him, uh, the players in the locker room. I can't say enough about Talia and the job he's done, and I, I still think the best is ahead for him. Awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Elise. Getting ready to rock and roll here in College Park. Harrison Beatty will kick it off. Octavian Smith and Roman Hemby back to return for the red team. This Maryland group again won eight games last season. Back-to-back -back bowl wins for the first time in a couple of decades. Trying to build off that. It all starts in the spring for next season as we are underway. The first team for the Red will come out offensively. You see Talia Tungavailoa, and of course, perhaps one of the best returning players in the Big Ten Conference. His presence will be ultra key, and it'll be fun to watch him today. Yeah, new offensive coordinator, a couple new transfers. I guess that's the world and landscape of college football, but they have the anchor in Talia Tugabailoa. He's the leader of this program. He's been here for a number of years. Introducing some of those new pieces and, and elevating some of the pieces they've returned, it'll fall on Leah's shoulders. Second team all Big Ten last season. Some new targets at a receiver this year that we're excited to watch. On the first play, he'll roll out. Dumps it to Corey Deitches, the tight end underneath one of his returners. Some good pressure in the backfield on that initial play, which is something they're looking for. Take a peek at the offensive headlines, though. We talked about the 
receivers, deep running back room. A lot of your production's back, Jay. Yeah, even though you're losing some names that Maryland fans and Big Ten fans are familiar with, with Kim Jarrett, Jacob Copeland, Dante Demas, they're all gone, but they returned three of their top four leaders in receiving last year. Jay Sean Jones, Corey Deitches, Roman Hemby. So as much as there'll be new pieces, they still return a significant amount of that talent. Corey Deitches, who's listed as a tight end, but you could almost call him an extra receiver in this group, makes the catch there. They called that previous play a loss of two, so kind of seems to get pressure from that D-line. Yep, and you know, after a loss, you just want to get back in the mix of it, have an easy completion. This is one of their favorite concepts. It's a corner and out route. You mentioned Corey Deitches, he's a tight end, but moves like a receiver. Just get the ball in his hands and get you into a manageable third down. You and Coach Gaddis had a fun time kind of reconvening yesterday in the meeting room. Talked over some tight end routes that we might see. It's cool seeing the smile on his face. Smile on your face as well. Got a false start called on the red team there. Yeah, Coach Gaddis, offensive coordinator at Michigan, went to Miami last year, now back with his head coach, Michael Loxley. Super familiar, and they're excited to see what he can do to help elevate this offense. Those two have known one another for a while. Josh Gaddis called Coach Loxley uh, a mentor in his life on and off the field as Roman Hemby gets his first touch and is bottled up, met by the interior of that D-line, which is a position group that we're kind of looking at. We'll see Tommy Akimbasote in the mix there. That's the, that's the big piece for this Maryland defense. You're deep at safety. You have talent at the edge out in the cornerback position and the linebackers, but they just haven't had that explosive, disruptive defensive front. That's something Coach Loxley has been emphasizing this spring, trying to generate some organic pressure where you don't have to send blitzes all the time, getting guys in the backfield early and disrupting. Boy, Sean Fuller got involved there as well. Brendan Segovia will punt here for the red team. Making the fair catch, Tarkeep still was an electric punt returner for this Maryland team in addition to what he does defensively. Not the, not the start you'd want with your, your starting offense out there. A little sloppy, some sacks, some penalties, negative rushing yards. Get back to the sideline, regroup, and, and see if you can come out and do something next time you get the ball. So Billy Edwards trots out. The second string QB that they're very comfortable putting in the game and have put in the game in big spots a season ago. More tackling from this defense and presence up the middle being showed. Loss of four that time. Not the result you wanted on that play, but I think you watch Josh Gaddis and the type of plays he likes to get to as an offensive coordinator. You go back and watch his tape from Michigan, what he wants to do at Miami. To supplement that run game, they're going to use some jet sweeps and wide receiver runs. Quick throw underneath this time. Able to find Preston Howard there. One of the tight ends that we're looking at, a newcomer after they lose C.J. Dupree via the transfer portal. You're kind of looking at who could take over that second more blocking tight end position. He's 6'6", 220. So perhaps needs to maybe add on some more weight, you think, to get to that blocking that you want? Yeah, he's got the frame, 6'6", but you want to get up to 250. Also played quarterback in high school, so maybe that blocking isn't going to come as natural to him. Good wrinkle there as the throw over the middle is incomplete. There's Josh Gaddis. Had a fun chat with him yesterday. You can feel his energy, how appreciative he is of this opportunity coming off a short stint in Miami, out back in the Big Ten. Really interesting point talking to Gaddis because when he was at Michigan, he was the Broyles Award winner for the nation's best top coordinator. Had so much success, and then he parted ways and went down to Miami, and last year certainly was not a success. And he talked about, he said, that perspective, he believes, will actually benefit him this year. You know, when it's you're having so much success at Michigan, you don't have to ask yourself the questions that you did at Miami. He said at the end of that year, he had to say, what could I have done better? What was I doing wrong? It forces you to look in the mirror, and in a sense, those failures help you improve. Spangler punched to Jay Sean Jones, mentioning those 
newcomers on the coaching staff here. There are four of them, Kevin Sumlin and Josh Gaddis, kind of collectively cheering the duties offensively. Latrell Scott, running backs coach, and Zach Spavital steps in with the safety group. I mean, Kevin Sumlin is a name, if you're a college yeah. football fan, you recognize that name right away. He's been around the block, you know, decades of coaching experience, head coaching experience, coached some Heisman Trophy winners. And again, Mike Loxley saying, hey, we, we got to elevate. Eight and five isn't good enough. We need to go out there and push and beat Ohio State, beat Michigan. So he went out and got the best two for his coordinator and co-coordinator in Gaddis and Coach Sumlin. Tungavailoa over the middle has a completion and a burst downfield. First big play for this offense. Ty Felton on the receiving end. We're going to whistle behind the play. So see how much yardage they give him here. Bo Braid's wearing the yellow no contact jersey, and uh, yeah. he, he might have something to say about that. <laughs> I think he felt he would have. If you're running across the middle with Bo Braid there, he's going to try to light you up. You see it, just a bang post. Easy completion, wide open, and there's Bo Braid making his case that that wouldn't have gone much longer. Braid is a part of a really good secondary returning for this Maryland team, notably Braid and Dante Trader, who isn't on the field today because he's playing lacrosse later tonight. So they do give them the first down there, and Sankavailoa will drop back, bouncing on his toes. Pressure came from the edge there. Way Sean Fuller bursting around the corner. Second time we've seen him do that today. There's Kevin Sumlin. Again, kind of collectively sharing those offensive duties with Josh Gaddis. Like you mentioned, his resume certainly more than speaks for itself. So you have an offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, right? So the offensive coordinator calls the plays on Saturdays. But the staff helps prepare you. And Coach Sumlin, you see the co-offensive coordinator, he's going to be involved in the game plan and helping Gaddis out with what, what plays they think will be successful that week. So it is a group effort. Hayden Prather gets involved for the first time today. He's one of the transfers at the receiver position, coming from West Virginia, 52 catches, 500 yards the season ago. He was a big offseason addition. We'll talk about him and Tyrese Chambers, some of these new pieces they added through the portal, but Prather, they're talking about him like he's the wide receiver one. Call him the big play machine. He's been having quite the spring, 6'4", 211, so he's a big body that Leah can throw the ball to down the field. And of course, you lose names like Rock Jarrett, Jacob Copeland. Names that are hoping to potentially be drafted. But you're returning, again, a good chunk of your production. Three of your four top targets from a season ago are back. Tonga Bailoa under pressure once again. A good sign early for this defensive line, putting some pressure on their QB1. That's number five, Quayshawn Fuller. This is his fourth play already in this game. He's been extremely disruptive in the backfield. And, you know, that was our point in the pregame show. He's up there to the top of the left of your screen, just in a bull rush situation. And, walks the tackle right back into Leah's lap. But that was an area of emphasis for this defense. By a lot of standards, they made a lot of progress last year. The defense played well, but one glaring need is finding a way to generate pressure without having to send guys in the blitz. Quayshawn Fuller should ease Coach Williams, the defensive coordinator's mind, knowing they got a guy that can get in there and mix it up. Quayshawn Fuller is a guy who began his career at Florida State. Out of high school, he was recruited by Alabama. And at the time, Mike Loxley was at Alabama. There's uh, all sorts of connections around this roster when it comes to past relationships, past recruiting. All kind of comes full circle in the constant evolving world of college football. Look, that's the fun part about the spring games, too. I mean, no uh -huh. one's no one's competing for a championship today, but there's so many, so much movement in college football, so many new pieces. Of course, the recruits, but the transfer portal, who's coming, who's staying, and we'll highlight a number of different guys that fit that mold today. Billy Edwards throws a dart on a crossing route. Caught there by Brian Vinny. He is one of the early enrollees at Maryland Native as you can say, from the DMV area, 55% of his roster. Moving a little quickly here. Antoine Littleton. Of course, his presence was certainly felt by opposing defenses in the Big Ten a season ago. It's a really good one-two punch at the running back spot with Roman Hendy and Antoine Littleton. And now defenses do know about them. Perhaps this best-kept secret going into last season. 
Edwards pulls it this time. Just has to toss that into the turf. So when Elise was interviewing Coach Michael Loxon in the pregame, what did he say? Hey, I want to see guys block and run the ball. And they get to this play action now two or three times. But I haven't seen the blocking and the running the ball yet. It's it's been the, it's been won by the defensive fronts for both the red and the white team. And uh, you know if that's a point of emphasis for Coach Loxley, he hasn't seen enough yet so far. You got to give give the win to the defensive fronts. Running game was a strength for Maryland in big matchups as he is to go in conference play. Edwards watches that tip off a couple of hands, nearly a fortuitous ricochet for this red team defense. Well, it goes back to not being able to run the ball. When you can't run it, instead of getting third and four or third and five, you find yourself in third and 11 and have to press to make something happen. And of course, third down, that's when the explosive plays happen, both for the offense and the defense. You got to push it past the sticks. That one gets tipped and nearly picked off. Jay Sean Jones back to return. Has been interesting to watch the defenses work early on. Some of that play action that Jake talked about. We mentioned Dante Trader isn't playing football today, but he is playing another sport today. We sent it down to the sidelines. He's with Elise. Because, yeah, he's with me on the sideline because you've got a lacrosse game later today. Just take me through what this time of year is like for you. I know that you're focused, obviously, on lacrosse. Yeah, it's very busy. You know, I come back and forth from lacrosse and football. I go to the lifts in the mornings, rehab over there, come over here for practice and meetings and anything, and then it's, and I also do meetings with my football coaches. So I'm always back and forth with these guys. What's it like being out here getting to catch the spring game before you play tonight? You know, it's just cool to see my guys, um, you know, reap the benefits of what they've been doing for the past couple of months, you know, cheer on both sides, you know, but I'll be on the white side originally, yeah. Describe just the process that, you know, you want to come to Maryland and you want to play both sports and what it's like been juggling that since you came in. Yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing to do or like set off to do because, you know, people call it crazy. But, um, you know, a lot's really originally he, like called for me to play football when I was already committed here to play lacrosse. And then it's been very supportive on both sides to be able to do that. So just be able to handle my um, weight on the field, off the field and things like that. I know coach has been very supportive, as you mentioned, going to your game said he'll be there tonight as well. What's it like to have him there? As you know, he didn't have to let me play, so I'm very thankful for that guy. And, you know, he messes with me all the time. He comes and supports, so I really love him for that. You know, the balancing, it can be uh, the time, right, that you have it. You don't have a lot of it. But all I read about with you is, is the preparation that you put in, the meetings you go to, the film that you watch. What does it take to excel at both? All the things you just said, like, it takes a... It takes what it takes, so that's what I say. So the extra meetings, the extra lifts, the extra film. I meet with Lauren about my weight and things like that, my strength coach. It takes a lot, I ain't gonna lie, but it takes a lot of um, mental work. A lot of people don't give credit. I'll give credit to the sports psychiatrist I work with to help me manage my, my stress and everything like that. Finally, so what's it gonna take to beat Rutgers tonight? It's gonna take everything it takes. They're a very good team and we respect them, but it should be exciting. Tonight. Dante, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jason, back up to you. Thanks, Elise. That was such a cool interview. Dante Trader is such a neat story, two-sport athlete. As he mentioned, they're committed to lacrosse before deciding to play football. He just, the commitment that goes into that is really incredible. Tonga Vailoa pulls it and takes off. So let's even put it into more context for Dante Trader, right? He's not just joining a lacrosse team, you know, walking. Mm -hmm. He's joining the lacrosse team that won the national championship last year and playing and contributing. He was a top five lacrosse crew, the recruit in high school. So, I mean, you can't say enough about this guy. Extremely talented, extremely versatile. And Coach Loxley mentioned when he recruits guys, he wants multiple sport athletes. So he's earned that right to go out there and play both. Dyche just makes the catch there. Well, Dante Trader has a tattoo, by the way, on his left arm that you and I both love as big Kobe Bryant fans. Says Mamba mentality. He certainly got the Mamba mentality as you see the defensive headlines here for Maryland. King Basote on your screen. He's already made an impact replacing Deontay Banks and Jacorian Bennett will be key at those corner spots. We're looking at that position today. Strong linebacker. I mean, it, you got some key names coming back. Jay Sean Barham, Ruben Hippolyte was on your screen as well a moment ago. There's Tonga Bailoa rolling out again, looking for the balance on the sidelines there of Octavian Smith, but they call it incomplete. 
I don't know. From from my angle up here, he might have tiptoed the sideline. It looked like he might have two in here. Let's let's get another look. Ooh. A really great catch. A really great catch. The ref had his eyes on it, so he probably has a better view than us, but it's a great effort by Octavian Smith. It was aesthetically pleasing, to say the <laughs> least. Yeah. Long line of talented receivers oh, coached yeah. by Coach Loxley and, and Josh Gaddis. A couple more going to the NFL today and Rakim Jarrett, among others. And you know, we asked him, hey, when do you know when a when a town when, when can you tell a guy's special? And that, in that conversation, he highlighted Octavian Smith Jr. Notable NFL draft prospects, Deontay Banks taken by the Giants on day one before Ian Bennett, just drafted by the Raiders. Jalen Duncan, another name to watch out for, should be hearing his name soon. And of course, the draft is going on right now. So for those watching, we'll keep you updated when some of these fan favorites, familiar faces, find out their next home at the next level. Another player not on that screen is Chad Ryland, who played a very key role in that Duke's Mayo Bowl win. Maryland was up 13 to 12 with about five minutes left. He hit a 45 yarder to make it 16 12, which was ultimately the final score and enough cushion to take back-to-back -back bowl wins for the first time in a couple of decades. More pressure from the D-line. That's a loss of five. Jordan Phillips getting involved. He's another player that the coaches raved about, Jay. Yeah, coming in from Tennessee, another guy that they added through the transfer portal. Big body, looks so physical, can, can hem up double teams, but that time at a lateral run outside zone, did a good job of pushing to the running back and bringing him down. Coach Loxley has a game ball in his office from the 2002 Tennessee versus Maryland Peach Bowl. A little throwback for Maryland fans. Meanwhile, showcasing his ability in the receiving game is Antoine Littleton, the running back. A bit more mobility as he's lost weight since arriving on campus. Yeah, I mean, up until this point, the defensive fronts have been winning. They've been able to get pressure and not give up much in the run game. So that's a great call by Gaddis saying, all right, you guys want to get upfield. You want to be disruptive. We're just going to run a screen right behind you and give it to their big tank in uh, Antoine Littleton. You're right, though, lost 50 plus pounds yep. in his career, completely transformed his body. You know, the Michigan game is when he first kind of came on the map for me last year. I just remember that defensive front was big and physical, but they could not bring him down. He was falling forward for an extra two or three yards every time. He's got that size and strength. That was one of a couple of one possession losses for Maryland in their first eight games through a six and two start. You say to yourself, you're a Maryland fan, maybe uh, a couple of plays go your way, and you're looking at potentially an 8 no start. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed Coach Loxley on the radio last week, and I used the word, hey, Coach, you scared Ohio State. You scared Michigan last year. And he said, yeah, I want to stop using that word scare and start using the word beat. Again, it's like it's great to be in it. It's, it's a good point to your, to your program, and you'll be focused on elevating that this fall. Kalia Tungavailoa is back. So is Ty Felton, who's off to the races. Second quarter next. Spring football, the Big Ten Network, is presented by the USFL. The USFL season continues tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Fox. You're home for the games. Welcome you back to College Park. Jake Butt, Jason Ross Jr. Second quarter of the annual red-white game getting underway. Jayshon Jones back to receive this punt. Some of the newness to college. We talk about all the newness in college football this year. There is a notable rule change. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Clock will continue to run when a first down is gained. In the past, it stopped, and clock will First stop ten, during the last two minutes of each half. Very similar to the NFL style clock management, where it, it runs. And for the most part, I don't think this affects the game until you get to the fourth quarter. When you're down multiple scores, you used to be able to run a two-minute drill and let get that clock to stop. But now with it running, you're going to have to hurry up throughout the fourth quarter. Say you're down 14 points, you need to score twice. You used to be able to use the clock stoppage to your advantage. Now you're going to have to get up and go. 
in those final two minutes, the clock will stop after the first down. But again, outside of that, it'll keep rolling. Tonga Vailoa back to work. More time to work with this time. Breaks down again off the edge was Quayshon Fuller that time, who has been wreaking havoc. It's, it's about unit defense. Quayshon Fuller came around the edge, but how long was Leah standing in the pocket there? He had nowhere to go. And again, that's highlighting this talented back end of the Maryland defense. Safety, they're really deep. Bo Bray, Dante Trader, they brought in another transfer, Avante Williams from Miami, the former number one safety in the entire 2020 recruit class. So they are deep across the board. Yeah, Tarheep still is on this unit as well. Again, it's well covered downfield, essentially turned into a coverage sack again. I mean, nowhere to go. Leah's looking, he's he's creating, he's making, keeping his eyes downfield, looking to make a play, but once again, no, there's nowhere to go. You mentioned Tarheep still, he's a guy, an, another transfer, Jaquan Shepard, coming over from Cincinnati. First team all-conference last year, he wears number three, played behind Sauce Gardner. The elite, I, mean, I think he was the defensive rookie of the year last year. So, again, they, they have some organic growth, guys that have been through the program, but for the most part, the guys they went to get in the portal are immediate contributors. We have Elise down on the sideline again with Coach Loxley. Coach, checking in with you. I know you're saying it's a defensive battle. What are your thoughts so far? It's like watching paint dry out here, man. I'm like, I know we're good on defense, but this has not been a efficient offensive uh, series for us, you know, especially as fast as the, the clock goes now with the new rules. You know, right now we got to get the ball out of our hands, taking too many negative plays, and I don't see a lot of guys creating separation if we're going to throw the football like we're trying to do in the game today. You got to get some guys open. I was going to say, so then what does it take? Like, what? how do you guys get to that next level right now? Well, you got to find the matchups, and, and, and again, you know, when the quarterbacks play with a yellow jersey on, it makes it a little tough because you never know possibly like if it's a sack or not a sack. And so we got to get the quarterbacks to understand even though you got the yellow jersey on, you got to play with a little more sense of urgency to get the ball out and, and, and get through your reads the right way. You want to watch a little bit with me and just kind of describe what you're seeing? All right. So <laughs> turn on harm's way. That's fair. You want to call a play? You, uh, Coach, I don't think you want me to call a play. You might have to call one because right now, I don't know what's going on with the offense. I'm not sure I'll know what's going on, Coach. Elise, I, I might be biased, but maybe throw the ball to the tight ends. We should give you an advantage if you, if you know, take care of the football. So. Hey, look, I got your foot. Come on. Break Gotta love Coach Loxley down on the sidelines. Jake, something I wanted to ask you as we get holding call there. You were a key part of Michigan's receiving game as a tight end. We talked about some of the new pieces out on the edge as receivers. How long does that timing take, though, after we heard Coach Loxley talk about that perhaps being a point of weakness so far early on, at least, in this game? Yeah, Timing-wise, I think most of it depends on the quarterback, right? The receivers are going to run. The tight ends are going to run. And it's on the quarterback to feel that timing and go out and put the ball where it needs to go. So they have that in Leah. I have no worries about that at all. I don't think it's timing. There's no one open down the field. I also think outside of that run right there, they haven't been able to run the football, which makes them one-dimensional again, third and long situations. And that leads me to say the offensive line, as you look at all the weapons, right? We've talked about some of the receivers. You got Corey Deitches back. You have a talented group of running backs. The offensive line is going to set the ceiling of this team. Number of new faces. We talked about Duncan going on to the next level. Lost a couple guys to the transfer portal. Brought a couple guys in. You know, God, Coach Gaddis mentioned the depth. At one point in spring, they only had nine guys out there. So they didn't even have a two deep of offensive line. The portal period is still ongoing. I think they're going to look to add maybe some competition and some pieces here after spring. Yep, that was a message that was pretty clear to us as we take a peek at our offensive line spotlight. Jake mentioned some of the names gone, such as Jalen Duncan, 
The likely starters, DJ Glaze, Delmar Glaze, I mean, he's a guy who could have perhaps gone to the draft this year. He is that talented Eric Harris at center, more than likely. The guard spots still kind of up for grabs here. Got lead Ayedze. They call him Gotti. Someone who they're really high on as a transfer, Corey Bullock as well. Marcus Dumerville came from LSU. Tungavailoa back in at quarterback. Quick throw this time. And a broken tackle on the edge. Potential injury behind the play. DB was dinged up there. Looks like Jaquan Shepard with transfer from Cincinnati that they are super excited about. Coach Loxley pointed him out right away when we asked about the corner position. Kind of came up with some good timing to meet the play, but now down on the field. We hope Shepard is okay. You never want to see in a spring game. And never, never want to see it any time, yeah. but of course. Mm, it just, oh. See the first point of contact, it was his head there. You know, the, the dangerous part of football. Juan Shepard down on the field will step aside. Jaquan Shepard did sit up, stand up, and walk to the cart on his own weight. It was a really good sign to see. High fived his teammates. Appears though they'll take him back for some more attention. But again, a good sign to see him sit up and stand up and then walk over to the cart again on his own weight. A player who they feel could potentially step into a starting role right away. Transferred from Cincinnati where he played a ton of football. So we hope for nothing but the best for Jaquan Shepard. You can see a smile on his face there. Yeah. It's a scary part of football, right? It's You can't avoid it. It was just a routine tackle. Said though, Jason, great to see him walk off on his own weight and great to see him smile. Tonga Vailoa goes back to work offensively now against a defense that's been really good. Found a soft spot over the middle has Jay Sean Jones. They returning leading receiver from a season ago. And that was a great job by Jones. It was a zone coverage, and he was running a crosser, but he feels himself open, so you see him kind of gear it down and settle in the zone. He's a veteran guy that's played a lot of football, and they're excited about him to take another step. He's a guy who had eight multi-catch games a season ago. Again, like you said, could still take that next step. Now very experienced Florida native. Two ACLs in his career, so he's been beat up. Last year he was cleared to play, but I've done my ACL three times. Even though you're cleared to play that first season, you aren't quite 100%. Now going to the offseason, they say he's fully healthy, and he's competing with Caden Prather to be that wide receiver one in this offense. Another quick dart, another completion. That was Rico Walker, the, the tight end, another early enrollee that they are all too excited about. Interesting story too, Jason. Recruited mainly as an outside linebacker. And Josh Gaddis, when he was at Miami, that's when he first came on his, his map, saw, hey, who's this guy on defense? And then gets up here to Maryland. They say, why don't, why don't we put you at tight end? I know his dad was a big piece of that. And Corey Deitches will lead that tight end room, but Rico Walker is a name that continually came up in the conversation. They think he can be a weapon. Hickory, North Carolina native. Again, that was such a neat story. Mm. Physicality from Hemby. He's a complete back. Complete back. He's explosive, was a freshman All-American last year. Can catch the ball out of the backfield. His biggest plus is he's got that breakaway speed. If you give him a lane, he's gone. And Gaddis said the next step for him is making guys miss at the next level. And didn't make a miss, but put Hippolyte on the ground. <laughs> Something you talk about with your teammates after the spring game, I'd have to imagine. Oh, of Might course. Might be brought up in the film room. 
Tonga Vailoa eludes the initial pressure, now has Ty Felton. Couple of nifty moves along the sideline, ultimately brought down by Tarheep Steele and company. We're looking at Roman Hemby. When we talk about the explosion of him, he was one of the most explosive backs in the country, even as a freshman. Eighth nationally in touchdowns over 50 plus yards, third in the Big Ten in touchdowns over 50 plus yards. Also an excellent receiving back in the SMU game last year. He had over 150 yards rushing and then a 50 plus yards receiving. So he's going to be a big weapon both on the ground, but they might flex him out and, and give him the ball in some screen situations too. Some defense are really going to have their have to have their eyes on Hemby. Hemby did roll out on that play. Tonga Vailoa ended up taking it himself. Kind of right on cue. They used him a little differently in that set. See yards and scrimmage last season for freshman Hemby, third in the country in that category. It's, I mean, a thousand plus yards, twelve hundred plus yards, doing it through the ground, on the air, uh, on the ground and through the air. And now he's he's a sophomore now. Now he has that full body of work to say, all right, here's what worked for me. Here's where I can be better. Usually that sophomore season is when you can make the, the next big leap. Multiple Big Ten Freshman of the Week awards last season. Colby McDonald, the back that's in now. He rolls out. Tonga Vailoa drops back. More pressure steps up. They'll blow it down. And who else but Quayshawn Fuller? He is once been again a nightmare. They might consider double teaming him or, or yeah. you know, get get some extra help because uh, that's his fourth or fifth sack or tackle for loss just continually. Number five has been in the backfield all day. There he is, explosive. Really got no shot to, to block him there. Jack Howes will take the 40-40-yard attempts. By the way, Chad Ryland was drafted by the New England Patriots, so he's off the board. Another Maryland product. Let's go down to Elise on the sideline. I'm with Lauren Antles. She's director of football nutrition. Lauren, you've got a big job making sure that these guys just stay on track with their nutrition. What is at their disposal every day when it comes to their food? Gosh, it's a lot. Um, so we have a fueling station that's open pretty much whenever they're around. So this is going to be some protein shakes, bars. Um, I like to make it very like grab and go so they can take things to class. So it's going to be sandwiches, yogurts, um, hummus and pretzel cups. So pretty much everything you can think of. A healthy gas station is how I kind of um, tell them about it. Um, and then we have our football only dining cafeteria, which has three meals a day that we provide them. So they are pretty much fed all the time. If they're in meetings, we have little carts for them just to make sure that they're always fueling whenever they need to be fueling, essentially. Antoine Littleton, he's been fueling in a very effective way. He's now lost about 60 pounds. What does it take for him to do that? Yeah, um, that was a lot of his own motivation. Um, he came in, he was ready to lose that weight. Um, so just working with me, he was constantly, you know, checking in with me at every meal, seeing what he should and could be eating. Um, and, you know, me learning his vices of, is he a salty, like, does he like salty snacks? Does he like sweet snacks? Just so I could throw a few of those in every once in a while, just so he felt like he was eating what he wanted to eat as well. Dante Trader, we talked to him and just how he goes back and forth from football to lacrosse. How does his diet change based on the season? Well, since he's kind of in season, but all year round, it's, it, it honestly kind of doesn't for him. And he is someone who is constantly eating just to make sure he is, he is at his weight. So um, for him, he, it's just every two hours, he needs to be eating something. And he knows that before he goes to bed, he needs to be eating something. Wake up within an hour, needs to be eating something. So we have a schedule down pretty packed, so he is always ready to go. You've prescribed as like a healthy gas station. What's the favorite, though, maybe non-healthy-ish, you know, snack these guys like? OK, they love. Um, Cheez-Its. I don't know if that's like, I wouldn't even consider that like not necessarily healthy, but um, they love Cheez-Its and gummy bears. They love gummy bears. So there you have it, guys. Cheez-Its and gummy bears. That's the, you know, healthy-ish snack to go to. I could sign up for that. Thanks, Elise. Thanks, Lauren. That was such a cool interview. There's a neat video out there just as Lauren talked about dissecting what the players eat for certain situations, Jake, like gaining weight, losing weight, light day of practice, heavy day of practice. It's really cool to see how detailed it is. And I think we all collectively wanted to stop by and have a bite of our own. Speaking of Antoine Littleton, there he is. I'm glad we had that interview yeah. and got awesome. a chance to talk to Lauren because it's one of those positions amongst your staff that doesn't get talked about enough. 
But these guys come in and fresh as freshmen, and they don't have college bodies quite yet. Of course, you have the strength staff and the weight room, but diet's such a big piece of that. Personally, I came into college as a tight end. I weighed 209 pounds. And my coaches looked at me, they're like, man, if you're not 245, you can't play. I met with that nutritionist every single day. I put on nearly 40 pounds in about six or seven months. Littleton, on the other end of that, lost 50, 60 pounds out here, and it's been paying dividends. He's made some nice plays so far here in the first half. Lauren does a phenomenal job in her role here at Maryland. Important question for you, Jake. What would you say, Cheez-Its or gummy bears? For me, I don't go Cheez-Its. Afternoon, I'm salty, so I take okay. the Cheez-Its. <laughs> it depends and on the time of day. I want a little sweet, yeah. I can get along both. with that. You know, my point is I take both. Both delicious. Versatile. As per usual, Jake Black. <laughs> What'd you say you went with? I go Cheez-Its. I'm a Cheez-It guy. Littleton showcasing his mobility once again. Talked about how much weight he lost, and it's been on display in this opening half with his mobility. You get the full spectrum here, the size running through the arm tackles, bouncing off guys, and then watch this hurdle, whoop, right over top of him. So for a big fella, and losing that weight, he's even tried to elevate his body even more this offseason, so you can see and expect more of those plays. Gain of 23 for Antoine Littleton. Boy, Maryland is going to have quite the one-two punch in Roman Hemby and Antoine Littleton this upcoming season. Talked about he, how he was used he to certainly in the goal line role, the one to utilize that body to cross the goal line. This were his numbers down on the goal line, scoring in six straight games. I mean, that is most since 2005, 2006. Now, I'm not saying he's Jerome Bettis, but he reminds me of Jerome Bettis. And he's like a battering ram in those third and one, fourth and one goal line situations. He's just so thick and dense with muscle, runs with great pad level. If you do tackle him, usually he's going to fall forward and get those extra two or three yards. And on that third and one, he had a couple guys trying to beat him. You're not going to bring this guy down with an arm tackle. You need to bring everything if you want a chance at him. Getting a well-deserved breather over there. Eli Mason has since subbed in. Billy Edwards at QB here. They hand it off again. Feels like the blocking has improved a bit on the edges. Flag is down over near where that tackle was made. See Josh Gaddis in the backdrop there. See if we get the penalty call. Did he get a holding call there? July 15th, the BTN Big 10K returns to Soldier Field in Chicago for the fantastic 10K and 5K races and tailgate parties. Scan the QR code or register right now at btnbig10k.com. I'm going to see you in Chicago, Jake. We maybe tag team that together. Run the 10K? Why not? Why not? Why not? In July, we talked about maybe taking off some weight. We get out there and, you know, you never know. We'll earn our Cheez-Its and we'll our, earn our Bears that way. Edwards looking to a one-on-one -on -one matchup in the end zone. Was that hauled in? It was! A beautiful grab from Robert Smith, the 6-1 sophomore, using all of the height. Beautiful grab, beautiful ball. Billy Edwards knows he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. And look at, look at him. He almost hand delivers this. Look at him drop it in the basket. And a nice catch by Robert Smith. They say on these vertical routes, you want to leave five yards to the sideline so the ball can fade you out there. That's exactly why you want to do it. Perfect execution. Beautiful grab. Puts the white team in front. What's been a low scoring first half of action. Extra point is kicked in by Harrison Beatty. We talked about the schedule from a season ago and how close Maryland was to potentially maybe two, even three more victories. We talked about the schedule earlier. Circle yeah. that week six Ohio State game. No reason why you think this team can't go into that game five and oh. It won't be easy, but you look at those first five games and there's not a single game there that they shouldn't feel confident that they could go out there and win. And we'll find out a lot about this Maryland team. 
certainly in the out of conference, and then you open it up in Big Ten play with Michigan State, Indiana. If you go into the Ohio State game five and one, that could be huge for the season because look at those last four weeks of your schedule. That's a gauntlet. Penn State at Nebraska, Michigan. Those three teams I expect to take big leaps this year and be a big challenge for Maryland. So early in that schedule, you want to get the wins, build the confidence, build the momentum, all to come all the way back to Loxley's goal and vision for this team, which is to compete with the best of the best in the Big Ten. You've got Penn State and Michigan here in College Park. Ohio State on the road in Columbus will be a huge one. It's interesting to kind of look back at last season. Speaking of Ohio State, Brian Williams told us, the Maryland defensive coordinator, that they gave up four explosive plays in that Ohio State game, which was a close one here in College Park on a, a blackout night, national TV, nighttime start. That was a really fun atmosphere. The following week, they ended up shutting out Rutgers to wrap up the regular season on a high note. Would you eliminate some of those explosive plays and perhaps it's a little tighter with Ohio State maybe on the ropes on the road? So Ohio State, they're an explosive offense. It's going to happen. Yeah. But you hear the word analytics often in sports and in football these days. When I was playing in the NFL and even going back to college, there's a couple analytics that stood out. One was turnover margin, but another was explosive plays. Offensively, if you can generate explosive plays, your likelihood of having success and winning the game is much higher. The flip side works for the defense, eliminating those explosive plays, forcing offenses to have to methodically move the ball down the field with seven, eight, nine play drives. It's a lot tougher on the offense if you, if you force them to move like that. Coaching staff told us goals, I mean, they need to get after the QB, create more, as they called, disasters in the opposing backfield, and developing those one-on-one -on -one pass rushers. We've seen so far today, and Equation Fuller emerge as perhaps maybe the guy that they're looking for to be the one-on-one -on -one pass rushers. Ty Felton is on the receiving end of that pass. Well, credit to Billy Edwards in the white offense there on the previous drive. Finally getting some movement, extending the drives. They were able to run the ball. Now you want to see it for the red offense. This is the one offense. This is to Leah Tugavailoa. Let's see if they can string together some successful plays and end with some points on the board. Tungavailo with a quick throw and another completion has his tight end, Corey Deitches. Honorable mention all Big Ten a season ago. Not a receiver, but you might as well put him on this list here. I mean, he's a guy who you spotlight, but in terms of players who are listed as receivers, these are some good names in the mix. Maybe not the biggest name on the list, especially last year, but Jay Sean Jones led their team in catches and yards. They're talking about him, and there's Caden Prather. Those two guys as the number one receivers, the first go-to guy. We've seen Octavian Smith show up today. Ty Felton is another name that was continually mentioned. And a new face, number zero, Tyrese Chambers, broke multiple records at FIU in his college. They're his college career. looking down the sideline for Jay Sean Jones. And they have him on a big completion down inside the 10. How Jay fitting. Sean Jones, how fitting. Right on Kiva's. I think they heard our receiver conversation up here. Let's see. There's the accuracy of Leah Tugavailoa. Notice the clean pocket. That's where it all starts because then his talent can really shine through. And just a great ball, Jay Sean Jones. Thought he had a chance to maybe tiptoe the sidelines and, and finish it with a touchdown. It was a gain of 21. Defensive line steps up on the ensuing play, which is a run. Promptly shut down. What a shot. That was a, that was a big time hit there by the white defense. That was Fanage Gote, part of that deep linebacker group. You could hear it all the way up here in the booth like a gunshot. Pow. He did good. He had 33 tackles this season to go back for uh, a 60 year, but only played one game in 2021 due to a season ending injury in the opener. His voice and leadership could be huge, Fanage Gote. Tungavailoa, pocket collapses, looking to the back of the end zone, has a completion and a touchdown to Tyrese Chambers, the newcomer and transfer from FIU, getting his first crack at Power 5 football. 
this is what separates Talia Tugavailoa and makes him not good, but great. It's the ability when the play breaks down to go out there and make something happen when it isn't there. Look at him scanning all of his reads. There's nothing there. The clock's ticking, bang, steps up between two pass rushers, keeps his eyes downfield, and then he's, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the Big Ten Conference, so he puts it right on the money. For Tungavailoa, the staff told us you never want to try to take the playmaker out of the playmaker, but they want to maybe eliminate the costly potential decisions at times were made a season ago. This was the artists at work. Well, we called for it to start the drive. Hey, can Leah, can you can you put together a drive and end with some points? And that drive was all to Leah with a nice pass down the sideline and then doing what very few can do, create, mixing it up and delivering a strike. Tyrese Chambers, third stop of his career that initially saw him as an All-American on the FCS level at Sacred Heart. Was very under-recruited out of high school. Where's that number zero? Does Tyrese Chambers, because initially there were zero scholarship offers. So he utilizes that as motivation and has throughout the course of his career. Big off-season addition. Got to love how he uses that number as motivation. I love that. In the greats of the greats is where we can look to see why that mindset works. Tom Brady, the greatest of all time. He still remembers being drafted in the sixth round. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, if you're not a LeBron James fan. He's, he remembers when he was cut early in his career from his high school basketball team. Tyrese Chambers is using that same principle, understanding he felt he was disrespected coming out of high school. Clearly as talented when you look at his career up to this point and some of the plays he's made today. That number zero is a constant reminder of his ability to go out there and prove some of those guys wrong. And he's a Baltimore, Maryland native as well. well tonight, the USFL season continues with the Memphis Showboats taking on the Houston Gamblers at 7 Eastern. Then tomorrow at 4 Eastern, the New Jersey Generals battle the Michigan Panthers. That's only on Fox. Two games this weekend. The USFL. Jake Butt, Jason Ross Jr. with you here in College Park. Watching the annual Maryland Red and White game to wrap up the final weekend of April. Spring practice culminating. A lot of hard work in recent weeks. Names as well that will potentially arrive in the summertime. There's a few names that aren't playing today that could play a key role when the fall arrives. Valuable situation here under two minutes to let Billy Edwards operate their two minute offense. Situational football on display. Antoine Littleton on the receiving end of that dump off. You're looking for some up-tempo here. Looks like the players are looking yep. for up-tempo. First play is the most important in a two-minute situation. It's got to get positive yards. Then you can line up and start operating your, your rack of plays. Edwards over the head that time of the intended target. He's looking again for Robert Smith. I thought he had him. Just missed him on that, on that situation. Has already found Robert Smith once on a deep touchdown pass. It's gonna be the highlight reel of this spring game so far. Robert Smith showing he could be engaged in that wide receiver conversation certainly as well. Deep, deep room. It is. High level talent. They got some young guys that are up and coming. No worries for what Coach Loxley's doing with the receiver position. Edwards on third down here. There was a bit of a collision over the middle. The umpire and the receiver crossing. Looks like Leon Hawk. Chance Harley, the defensive back, number 24, he's thanking the ref because there was some green grass out there. You look at that. If that ball could have been accurate, he might still be running. But we don't worry about what could have been. We just worry about what did, that and the white team sends out the punt team. The mentality here is very forward thinking. They don't think about the past. We brought up some of the numbers from a season ago, and it was always, let's talk right now and what's ahead of us. And building towards the upcoming season is Jason Jones with the fair catch. Well, if you're a Terps fan, you should stick around tonight. We'll cross Maryland collides with Rutgers in the 2023 Big Ten Men's Lacrosse Tournament quarterfinals. Live coverage begins tonight at 8 Eastern on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Remember, Dante Schrader.
key player in the Maryland secondary will be on that men's lacrosse team tonight for Maryland. He's trying to guide the Terps to another deep postseason run. They won the national championship a season ago in men's lacrosse. We'll see what Loxley wants to see from the offense here. Potentially get into a two-minute situation with Leah and then the number one offense, but they're backed up. They may just try to run the ball and, and let the clock run. Out of the shotgun, he's looking to a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Ty Felton on the receiving end. He's able to haul in that pass, and now maybe Jake, you try to speed things up a little here. Disregard anything Disregard I just said, it. right? Hey, it's a spring game. We're going to go attack it. And, and similar to Billy Edwards' pass earlier, Leah knows he's got his guy, Ty Felton, one-on-one -on -one in the situation. They call him his nickname. He could take the top off the defense. Great speed. And you got the quarterback to, to drop it in there accurately and a nice catch to get the drive started. Now you're thinking points for sure, Jason. That was a gain of 34. Talia Tungavailoa watches two-minute tape of NFL quarterbacks each day with Josh Gaddis. This is kind of a scenario here where they have reviewed a lot of situational football, now putting it into action, which is kind of what, all, what your spring game is about. Pressure comes. They blow it dead. That's Tommy Aking Basote. Receiving the middle once again. Tommy Between him and Quayshawn Fowler, it seems like we've been calling these two names in the backfield. There he is, right in the middle of your screen, coming coming across from the right side. Gets underneath, so they're just running the game, not pressure. They're just twisting guys inside and out. And for a big fella, he's six four, three ten, but looking really quick and nimble getting up there and creating some pressure. He is. That's something you were looking for as to who would step up with that open tackle spot and open opportunity there. King Basote, also a Maryland native. This drive with Talia Tungavailoa began with a 34-yard connection to Ty Felton, but a King Basote kind of blowing up the last play. And listen, this is it's not rocket science. Here's what I see. When you give Leah time, he's going to hit the receivers down the field. But when you got guys in his face, he can't get through his reads. He can't complete those passes. As good as it is to see the defensive line generating pressure, it's a spring game. You're going against your own guys. We have to look at the offensive line who has not played the cleanest game thus far. It's an offensive line still gelling together, as Jake pointed out earlier. Several new faces, some within at the position they plan on adding to that group as the transfer portal continues to roll on. After spring practice wraps up, Deitches, oh, nearly hauled that in. Was kind of over his shoulder, had to make a quick adjustment. And once again, he, he was wide open. That's an easy pitch and catch, but number 40, Tyce Johnson is in Leah's face and forces him to just be off with his accuracy a little bit. Almost a, a phenomenal catch by Deitches. Couldn't quite haul it in. Ended a streak of 11 straight completions for Talia Tungavailoa as he found a bit of a groove. Free 50 play. seconds left in this opening half. Down the seam they go. We're looking for Deitches once again. Out of his reach. But a flag down. He went on the double count. Got him to jump. Been a fun ending to this first half. Well, what would Coach Loxley say after the first quarter? It's like watching paint dry. There's nothing going on. Then you get in a two-minute situation. A little more ump tempo, a little bit more downfield. We kind of called upon those receivers. It seemed like they were listening to us. Boy, still, again, almost jumped on the outside there at the bottom screen. We might watch that. That's one-on-one -on -one coverage with Caden Prather. Lee has been liking to throw the ball down the sideline to his right. That's a fun matchup. Bottom of your screen. Talia Tungavailoa is looking that way. Wants it. That time, Tarheep still won the battle with Gaden Prather. He called it. You saw that coming. Caden Prather, six foot four, 211 pounds. A big frame, big body, long arms down the sideline. Leah sees him in press coverage one on one and kind of had his mind made up before the ball was snapped that he was going to give his big receiver a shot. But that was great coverage there. With 41 seconds left in this opening half of the annual red white game, a promising drive results in a punt. 
Zarheep still on the receiving end. See if they try to do something here with this final 33 seconds. Did see one deep shot to Robert Smith that resulted in a touchdown. Zarheep still there trotting to the sideline. Again, he's a key returner at the corner slash DB spot. Look at him in the secondary, or maybe as your shutdown corner, trying to replace Deontay Banks and Jacorian Bennett, both players that have been selected in the NFL draft. Banks to the Giants, Bennett to the Raiders. Oh, that ball was on the turf. Edwards had to scoop it up. And the pocket collapses. I don't know if he thought Billy Edwards was under center there, but yeah, he skipped it right back to him. Let's see. That 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 never had a shot, Jason. No. Timeout on the play for the white team here. By the way, if you joined us a bit late, speaking of those NFL draft picks, Chad Ryland, former Maryland kicker, was also taken by the New England Patriots. 112th pick in the draft. Belichick loves special teams. Yeah. Such an important piece in New England. What a great place now for Rylick to go step in and, and be with a Hall of Fame coach and hopefully be their kicker for the next decade plus. Saw Jake Moody, another Big Ten kicker from Michigan, was taken by the 49ers. Deontay Banks to the Giants. Yeah. Three out of the past six years here in Maryland with a first round pick. Quickly making an adjustment to haul that in was Leon Houghton. As he had a nice burst off the line of scrimmage. 20 seconds left. It was a game of 19. Sloppy start to the drive. Thought maybe they'll just try to run out the clock, but once again, it's the spring game. That's just a little hole shot. Nice execution to see that by Billy Edwards, put it in there, and nice accurate ball for Leon Houghton. Edwards to work again. Pocket was strong. Oh, what a grab! Over the middle, somehow hauled in by Preston Howard, the young tight end they're very high on. What a grab. Preston Howard played quarterback in high school, now playing tight end, similar to Travis Kelsey. And that looked like Travis Kelsey, too. Those are the plays you have to make as a big target running down the field. Earn your quarterback's trust. Billy Edwards just puts it out there. Big body, Preston Howard. Let's see if you can come down with it in an excellent catch in traffic. And then, once again, they're completing the ball when there's a clean pocket. They have all these weapons. They got great quarterback talent. Just give them time. Great catch by Preston Howard. Looks like he's maybe learned a thing or two from Corey Deitches as well. He's one of the top receivers on this Maryland team a season ago. Also a tight end. You're looking for your number two tight end. That's pretty fun to see if you're a Maryland fan right now. He's making a point. He's going to come off to Kevin Sublin. He is the tight end coach, too. So come off. Hey, coach, how do you like that? Maybe you can mix me in there with Corey Deitches more often. <laughs> Maybe made a point with that grab. Yep. We got to chat with Kevin Sublin last night at the team restaurant. Great guy, and he's loving every minute of coaching at Maryland so far. Fourteen seconds left. More situational football here. Billy Edwards going to get this white team in field goal range, perhaps. Down three with nine seconds left. As you see Kevin Sumlin on your screen, a resume that certainly speaks for itself. Another situation here, nine seconds on the clock. The white team has one timeout. Ideally, you want to just get a couple more yards to, to make the field goal more favorable. The last thing you can do here, you cannot take a sack and you can't take negative yards or a turnover. Antoine Littleton is the back. Get one timeout left. Edward steps up, quick dart, it's Howard again, inside the 20. Preston Howard to the sideline where he's dragged out with two seconds left. They'll count it down to one tick left. So they did what you wanted to do there, Jake. They got in field goal range. And really lucky, too, because there's one second left on the clock. But here you can see the athletic, uh, athletic athleticism 
big guy, long arms, but a great athlete too. He can catch the ball in traffic and making the case when you just give him the ball in space that he can do something after the catch. Again, former quarterback in high school, so he sees the game and understands coverages and zones from a quarterback's eyes. Harrison Beatty trying to tie it up. And we're deadlocked at 10 going into the break. That was a fun first half of action. They kind of picked up some good situational rhythm down the stretch. Defense has got the jump early, specifically on the line of scrimmage. Both QBs began to settle in. Turned into a really fun first half there, Jake. Yeah, slow start. But the offense has responded again once they were able to get some momentum going and the offensive line stepped up they were we were able to showcase some of those weapons they have on the outside and tie ball game 10 10 should be a fun second half too, Jason. Elise is gearing up on the field to chat with coach Loxley send it down to Elise. Coach your offense is getting going late there. What'd you see from them? You know what they finally got a little rhythm with, with Leah there and both Billy is good to see both those guys finish up with a couple of scoring drives which we needed to see um, that's this kind of how you want the game you it's a competitive game we've got our one offense pretty much going against our one defense and twos against two so it, it, I like the way the game's going now and I was a little uh, a little nervous there with the way the offense has looked in early in the first quarter but they pick things up here in the second quarter I just want to check in how is Shepard doing He's doing great, man. I, I probably got over there a little too early. As a coach, usually you're on the sideline, and uh, I'm glad that he's doing well because it was a little scary there when I first walked up. Good to hear. Coach, thanks. We'll see you in the second half. No doubt. Thanks. Thanks, Elise. Thanks, Coach. Final weekend of April has been a fun one in College Park, 10-10, in the annual red-white game at the break. Elise is with Damon Evans on the sideline. Damon, it's good to see you. I want to start with the news, the, the recent news that Michael Loxley, you agreed to new contract terms. Just what's it like now to know that you have coached to 2027? First and foremost, it's well-deserved. Lox has earned it. He's done a tremendous job for us, and I'm glad to have him locked up, and I look forward to big things to come. How have you seen a change in this program since he has become head coach? Well, we talked about from the beginning a process. We wanted to build it the right way. And what Locks has done is gradually built us, and we want to make sure it's sustainable. So what he's done thus far, I've seen consistent improvement, and I'm excited. And he has that mantra, the best is yet to come, right? So what do you see in this program? Where do you see it going? Uh, you know what? We're going to win championships here. I do believe that because we have this idea of being intentional about what we do, making sure we get the players in the DMV, but help these young men grow and develop. And if you do those things, the outcomes will, lead, will be wins. What is it like when you can get athletes like in here from the DMV as you describe and how it changes athletics? It really changes the program. When you can recruit from your own backyard and know that you can build a great team, it really builds camaraderie. You get that hometown feel and people that come out and support. There's a lot of support on this campus today. You have a lot going on. You have a couple of lacrosse games after this. Just what's it like right now in athletics? Today uh, with Maryland Day on campus is a great time to have the red and white game. Athletics is going really well for us. I'm excited about men's and women's lacrosse. I'm excited about football, everything we're doing. So I want to give a shout out to all of our student athletes. David, thank you so much for the time. We always appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Elise. That's Maryland AD Damon Evans on a fun day in College Park, 10-10 at the half of this red-white spring game. They're selling the lemonade at the half in Maryland spring game, 10-10 at the half in our annual red and white game. Jake Butt, Jason Ross Jr., pumped to have you with us today. Jake, there was a really fun ebb and flow to that opening half of action. We saw a lot of different things and ultimately culminated with some good situational football at the end, too. That's really what you want in a spring game because you're playing against yourself. You don't want one side to be too not dominant. First quarter clearly went to the defense. Offense couldn't get much going, but then the offense was able to respond, and particularly late in the two-minute situations, we were able to see them showcase some of these talented weapons. Speaking of talented weapons, we talk about Talia Tungavailoa 
returning this year, one of the most talented players in the Big Ten. What are your takeaways from him in that opening half? The takeaways were that it, it starts to me with the offensive line. If he can have a clean pocket, you're going to see in this highlight reel, he's going to put the ball where it needs to go, and he's going to spread it around to a number of different receivers. He did it underneath. He made some nice big throws down the sideline. He was able to create with his feet. So we really got to see the full package of who he is as a quarterback. But again, it goes down to the offensive line. On the flip side, too, it, it wasn't just Talia. And actually, Billy Edwards struck first with some of his throws down the sideline. He had a really nice half. Of course, Talia will be the starter, but their backup in their future is solidified with Billy Edwards. Some nice passes, nice accuracy. He was also spreading the ball around. Of course, got the tight ends involved, too. Receivers, tight ends. So Billy Edwards had a great half, and, and I think it was interesting. Gaddis said, you know, it's the best situation because Billy Edwards understands it's his role as a backup. He understands it, but he doesn't accept it, meaning he's going to help Lee out, he's going to help the team out, but he's also a competitor and wants to push, and you can see that on display in the first half. Looking forward to seeing those two go head-to-head -head once again in the second half. More coming up on Big Ten Network. For the biggest Big Ten experience, there's no plus like home. My favorite app, Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network. Download and subscribe now. Fun action going on. Mentioned we have the Maryland men's lacrosse team on our air later tonight, playing their quarterfinal in the Big Ten tournament. Dante Trader will be obviously playing lacrosse tonight, not football today. One of the members of the Maryland football secondary as well as a two-sport athlete. One of the cooler stories around not only the Big Ten, but college sports. We got to interview him earlier today. Elise did an awesome job with that. Jake Butt, Jason Ross Jr., Elise Meneker, your crew here. There's Billy Edwards, who's had a nice game. He and Talia Tungavailoa taking the vast majority of the QB reps. Edwards was 8 of 15, 134 yards. Speaking of Elise, she is down on the sidelines with Tyrese Chambers. I sure am. Tyrese, first take me through your touchdown in that first half. Uh, man, like I said before, uh, my quarterback, he extend plays. That's what he do. So uh, once I seen him put his foot in the ground and roll back, I knew I was going I knew I was going to be open because he looked downfield, and that's what he do, make plays. So I stay alive for him. I want to ask about your journey to Maryland, Sacred Heart, FIU, and now you call it your dream school. What's it like to get here? Man, it's a beautiful feeling, man, just seeing my, my family in the stands um, at the spring game with all, all, all these people at my dream school, man. I, it's a dream come true. It's really, it's really speechless. Like it took me a long time to get here. It was a long process, but hard work pays off. And that's what I want to just, just say for any, any kid out there, just keep going. You've had a lot of motivation. I want you to describe the reason you wear number zero. Um, just because I, I, where I come from, you know what I'm saying? I had zero opportunities coming out of high school and uh, this number means a lot to me. So that's pretty much it. And I always, I always wanted to let people know, like, you know what I'm saying? God come first and my teammates come second. So I wanted to have zero. What's it like now to be a part of this team, like you were saying with Leah as your quarterback and what this offense can do? It's fun, man. It feel like we've been we've been playing together for years. It's just it's always fun, exciting. We always have a good time, but uh, we be locked in. We all locked in, and we we all be on the same page all the time. Why do you think you guys have come together like that so quickly? Uh, just because we, we got the same type of journey, man. Um, he had he had to work obviously to get to where he at right now, and then to you know what I'm saying to, to be in the history books here, and that, that's what I hope to do this upcoming season as well. So we got a mutual connection. Your head coach, Michael Loxley, just what is it like to play for him? That's my guy, man. I love that dude. <laughs> it's, it's, I can, nothing else to say. I just love that guy. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Tyrese. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. Fantastic interview. And so cool to hear Tyrese Chambers dip into his motivation with that number zero and his journey that's culminated in returning home to his home state of Maryland, Baltimore native at his dream school. Nifty move is putting his foot in the ground here. Is Surrey, the quarterback who's in now, third different QB we've seen today. Ended up being a loss of three, though, on the play. What a what a big smile, too. What a special kid, Tyrese Chambers. And he talks about his quarterback grinning ear to ear, right? He's uh, got a great one to spread him the ball. And he said, Maryland's his dream school. Well, why is it his dream school? Well, because he's from Baltimore, Maryland. One of a number of guys on this roster. Loxley has done a great job of recruiting the local areas here in Maryland. 55% of the roster from the DMV hall. Oh, that was nearly jumped and picked off. We talked about that corner position. That was Lionel Whitaker there. 
He's a Miami native, so what it, what it feels like a, a rare view outside of the DMV as you see that number. Tyrese Chambers chopping it up on the sideline. He could be very fun to watch this year if you're a Maryland fan. Seeing him for the first time today. Pass out to the flats. <laughs> Eli Mason on the receiving end there. Seen four different running backs today. Antoine Littleton was really impressive in the opening half, both on the ground and in the receiving game. Should go back to that graphic. 55% of the roster is from the local area. And when I, I had a chance to meet with Coach Loxley last year, I started to notice that trend as well. So I asked him about it. And he said, hey, the number one indicator to get a recruit is proximity to home. So they're recruiting the backyard because this is where the guys are from. Another piece of this, Jason, and we've, we've touched on this a couple times throughout the broadcast, college football is changing. College sports are changing. You recruit a guy and they can tr leave or transfer at any time. Well, if their roots are here in the backyard, I would imagine that that makes it an easier stick. They're more likely to stay throughout their entire career. And, uh, you know, 55% has been a great job of Loxley recruiting this area. They're good players, too. Coach Loxley talked about the goal coming into this season and the momentum they've had building off that Duke's Mayo Bowl win from a season ago. He, he talked about, you know, obviously he grew up in the D.C. area and seeing those Maryland teams of the 80s and how good they were. And that vision of where he wants to get it has been embedded in his mind really since then. And he wants to build it with homegrown talent, and that's clearly what he's doing. Well, the other part of that conversation, which, I mean, I was thinking about it throughout the day, how much it impacts me is, you know, we were asking him, you know, why coaching? Because it is so challenging to have to go through the, the transfer portal and, and all the new challenges coaches are taking on here. As uh, There's Coach Loxley with Deontay Banks wearing the Giants jersey early. But, you know, Coach Loxley, why do you want to be a coach? And he told us, hey, he grew up in a single pair, single pair at home with his mother. And he looked to his coaches in his childhood as father figures. All those coaches made such an impact on him that he wanted to then go up, be a coach himself one day, and you know, so be a father figure to some of these players, love them, also get on them if they're falling short, help lead them. And he's certainly been paying it forward and living by that principle. He talked about the new contract terms. He said, he said I would do this for free. <laughs> yeah, be good. I mean, he just loves the job. Also talked about how this new contract term, it gives him more time to get this program to that vision he talked about, what we just talked about, and being in his dream role. Loves to be in it, and now, because new contract terms, we know he'll be in it longer. They were looking for pass down the sideline there at intentions to find Caden Prather, but he slipped up. Tarheep still was in on the coverage. Those two kind of got entangled with one another and still is slow to get up. right shoulder he's holding his right shoulder just there Prather went down and tripped up inadvertently still as they both kind of entangled with each other just dipped into the tent momentarily we hope he's okay we did get a positive update on Jaquan Shepard the new DB transfer from Cincinnati <laughs> Coach Loxley told us he's doing well after going down in the first half. That was good to hear. Cameron Edge in the game now at QB. Edge wears that number 12 because he's a huge fan of Tom Brady. Talked about him earlier in the broadcast. As that was complete on the edge to Octavian Smith, who changed his number from 15 to 5 this season. 
I don't know the exact number, but here you are, third and eight. It, it's felt like the Maryland offense for both teams have lived in third and long situations. Edge getting his first taste of a third down situation. Has Tyrese Chambers, who at least just interviewed not too long ago. Meanwhile, he'll reset here. Wearing that number zero because he had zero offers in high school. How did this guy have zero offers, man? How it's did the number believe. he's put up and, and what he's doing today? It's uh, That was a miss by the experts. All-American on the FCS level at Sacred Heart before moving up to FIU to play FBS ball. Now his first crack at a Power 5 chance in his career. Chambers is a grad student now. Record-breaking career at FIU as well. Set the single-season record for reception yards and touchdowns. He had nine touchdowns in one season back in 2021. Entered the transfer portal initially then and was one of the most coveted receivers or players in the entire portal. Decided to go back to FIU for one more year. Re-entered the portal and found, finds himself back home here in Maryland. Edge has a receiver open. And that is hauled in along the sideline by Caden Prather. No, he broke it up. I broke it up. Well, someone who knows a thing about two route defense, Deontay Banks and Coach Loxley are with Elise on the yeah. sideline. That's perfect. Deontay, they were saying, you know a thing or, thing or two about some pass breakups, I want to say. 100%. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Here you are in your Giants gear. What was it like to hear your name called day one? Um, it's really just a dream come true. Like, if you see my video, like, I just sat there and soaked it all in, to be honest. I just sat there. Like, it was a real good, real good experience. First time I've seen him with a loss of words because he likes to talk a lot when he's on the field, but all of a sudden now he's a man of few words when he got a lot of money coming his way. Well, you're back here because you wanted to see your team play. Just what was it? What is it like to see them out there? I mean, real good. Like, I just wanted to see my guys play, like Tarhi, Corey Coley, all my guys. Play. What's the potential you see in this defense this year? A lot. A real good, a real good group. What about you, Coach? You know what, I, I like the way we play t defense the first quarter. Right now, and the offense has kind of been scoring quite a few points, and uh, I like to see us get a stop here defensively and uh, keep, it, keep it a really good game. Right now, I like the way the game's progressing. What's it like when you see former players, as we saw a few today as well, get drafted? You know, as I always talk about, when you sit on people's couch and you tell them uh, and share the vision of earning a degrees, being developed to, to be able to go to the next level. And here's a guy that's doing both. I mean, the thing that's really unique is throughout all this draft process, he's still in school, he's still a full-time student, and he's on track to graduate with his class in a couple of weeks from now, while also uh, being drafted in the first round. To me, that's what it's all about, and that's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Deontay, when you hear a coach talk like that, as, as he talks about you finishing school, what you did here, what did he do for you? He really did everything for me. He just helped me out a lot. And a lot of different ways. That's why I'm here today. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Thank Congrats you. again. Thanks, Elise. Another super cool interview. A little back shoulder fade there. Intentions for Caden Prather. We spoke to Coach Loxley about just the emotions that go through him when you see a player drafted. And thinking back, Jake, to the conversations, you've had these conversations back in late stages of your high school career with coaches. You're envisioning academically and on the field how things will blossom and then it ultimately culminates in reaching your dream as Deontay Banks did by getting drafted by the Giants and it's so neat to look back on and that journey and how it develops. The best coaches have an impact far beyond the field and you can clearly see that coach Loxley has made an impact on his players exactly that far beyond the field. Nice crossing route into the end zone. They call that a touchdown. Streaking across there was Tyrese Chambers for a 13-yard pitch and catch to put the red team in front. That's number two on the day for the new guy, Tyrese yep. Chambers. That was a really great throw, too, having to throw it all the way out to the wide side of the field on the corner route. Look at that. Just throwing it to a spot and letting his guy go out there and get it. Wasn't the prettiest spiral, but 
Cameron Edge kind of got contacted and, and found a way to, to drop the egg in the basket, as we said. And Tyrese Chambers continues to play with the smile on his face and his family in the stands today. He'll certainly be here all season. Back in his home state. Team 17, the white team 10. Later today, more spring action comes your way as Rutgers competes in the Scarlet White game. Live coverage begins today at 3 Eastern, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Again, that's the Scarlet White game getting underway later today. Here's Deontay Banks and Coach Loxley once again. Can't imagine. I have to imagine it'd be hard to sleep after getting drafted and the happiness, the excitement. Of course, as he mentioned, Deontay Banks still finishing up some classes and then getting to work with the Giants. You know, Jacorian Bennett and Chad Ryland were also drafted. Fans loving it. Got all the smiles on the sideline. Leah getting them hyped up there. It just feels like this program is ready, right? Eight and five. Can you get to nine wins? Can you get to ten wins? It feels like this program is ready to take the step. The challenge is, is going to be going out there and doing it this fall. Elise is down on the sidelines with Talia. Talia, just describe, uh, you know, how the game feels right now. Uh, game feels amazing. You know, we're up seven points right now, and um, we're just trying to win the game. This series will be steak and lobster. That sounds good. What does it mean to you to be back at Maryland? Uh, it means everything. You know, this is my home. This is uh, somewhere that you know I, I feel com I'm most most comfortable at. Um, you know, I love the the guys that I'm surrounded with, the coaches that I'm surrounded with, and. Just this area, you know, I feel like they take care of me a, a lot. So, you know, I'm I'm happy to come back again and, you know, finish what, what we started over here. So. How do you think that Maryland has become home for you? Because you've used that word now a few times when you just describe it. Yeah, um, well, I, I feel like I, I say home because it feels like family over here. You know, when I first came here, it was COVID. So, you know, we had to go through a lot of ups and downs and uh, just everything, uh, you know, with Coach Locks' vision that he'd been trying to portray upon this whole team. I feel like, you know, we've been through a lot together and we're still here sticking it out. And, you know, I've been here, this is my fourth year here, I think. So, you know, just excited to finish strong. You mentioned finishing what you started here. What do you see from this team this season? You know, I feel like the sky's the limit for, for us. You know, I feel like we got the weapons, uh, we got great coaches. And I feel like, you know, our team is bought into uh, the process, you know, what Coach talks about. Uh, just buying in each and every day, working hard and putting our head down and, and grinding. And I feel like, you know, we can win the, the, the games that we need to win for us to be put on the map. So, I feel good. Leah, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Talia Tangavailoa, you see the career program numbers that he's put up. It's really been spectacular to have him back and the consistency in a day and age where it's rare to have a guy like him return once again. Rare, but so important and such a valuable piece. Again, the, the roster turnover year over year is something that NFL teams experience. It's it's not traditionally been that way in college football, but to have a quarterback, the anchor of your offense, the anchor of your team, the anchor of the locker room, for him to be in here and be the singular voice to, to direct this ship in the right direction. You know, Coach Loxley, the whole staff couldn't say enough good things about him, obviously, if you followed his career and, and listened to him and, and watched him play, it's evident what makes him so special. Final play of the quarter. Did I hear Talia say the winner gets steak and lobster? Jake, that sounds pretty good. You had a good steak yourself last night. I did at Loxley's restaurant, too. It was a beautiful steak. We'll see who gets the steak and lobster when we come back. It's a seven-point game. Spring football, the Big Ten Network is presented by the USFL. The USFL season continues tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Fox. Multiple games this weekend in the USFL. 
Young Turk fans loving it. Sun's starting to peek out a little bit here, mostly gray skies. As Billy Edwards just moved the chains on a fourth and one for Team White. They would love to tie it up. There's Antoine Littleton. Edwards looking over the middle as his target, another good chunk inside the 20 yard line. I get Leon Houghton that time on the receiving end, gain of nine. Once again, it's clearly to Leah's team, and, and that almost just, it does go without saying, but Billy Edwards might be the best backup quarterback in the entire Big Ten Conference. He has game experience last year. Similar to Talia, he can make the plays, but he's been looking really comfortable today. We know Billy Edwards can use his legs. I was not going to hit the quarterback in this game, so they blow it down. After about a gain of eight there. I loved what Gaddis said about him, too, because we just asked him, hey, what, what, what can you tell us about Billy Edwards? And he said he, he plays his, he accepts his role as a backup. He plays it well, but he never is comfortable with it, meaning he's always going to go out there and push Talia and compete as if he is the starter. It's the perfect situation. They called him the ultimate program guy. Hard to find a number two QB with his DNA and makeup. Because typically they're they're departing if they aren't the starter. Great point. In the words of Gaddis, they certainly spoke very highly to Billy Edwards and said, "If we have to go out and play a game with Billy Edwards as the starter, we aren't flinch, flinching one bit." How important is that, right? Talia will be gone after this year, and you don't have to stress or worry who's going to be our quarterback next year. You have a yep. good one in Billy Edwards. That consistency also helps some of these talent. They got a lot of young receivers that'll be coming back as well. Young running backs. Certainly a luxury. Edwards going to drop back here. Some initial pressure off the edge. Just has to throw it away. And that's Thomas, number 35, coming off the edge. Not initially, it looked like maybe it was a rollout to the right, the way that that was blocked by the offensive line. But Thomas, you're going to roll right into my lap. All right, I'm, I'll take the sack. I'll add it to the board. I guess Billy Edwards got it away, so an incompletion. The defensive line's really kind of the story in the opening quarter. And both QBs settle in, settled in. Antoine Littleton is back in at running back. Kept the drive going on that initial fourth and one. Has it here, patiently maneuvering behind his blockers. Gets down to about the 10. You know, he's been having a good game today, too, Jason. And a number of times, early in this drive, it was a fourth and one situation. Take a guess who they're going to give it to there. It's Littleton, but not just in the short yard. And she's broken off some nice long runs and made people miss at the second level as well. Littleton changed his number from 31 to 7 this season. His high school number was 7, so back to his roots. Edwards again pressured on the same spot. Littleton, of course, a part of the one-two punch with Roman Hemby, who we saw. Talia Tungavailoa, your starting QB. Big 10 all second team returning. We've seen Tyrese Chambers have somewhat of a breakout day with two receiving touchdowns. He's one of the newcomers at receiver via the transfer portal from FIU. Should mention the tight ends because they've been having a very productive day, day as well. Preston Howard made some nice highlight plays. Corey Deitches is, of course, one of the better returning Big 10 tight ends in the conference. There's Beatty makes it a four point game. Yeah, it's been a plethora of tight ends today, like you said, Howard, Dijes, Rico Walker. Here's the 2023 schedule again. Earlier, if you weren't with us, we circled that Ohio State game. Can you go into that game undefeated, potentially? There's no reason why you can't. And Maryland fans certainly remember how tough they played the Buckeyes on this field late last season. And, you know, look at the big picture. Look at those last four games. Penn State at Nebraska, Michigan. Those will be challenging, so the, the front portion of this schedule, you want to build wins to get ahead in that win column. You know, a, an interesting point, Charlotte, probably a team most people don't know or consider to be tough. Well, they made a coaching change this offseason. They hired Biff Pochi, who was the associate head coach at Michigan, spent a lot of time under Jim Harbaugh, and they've done some things. They It's almost like a Michigan junior over there. They've added a number of 
talented backups and talented pieces from Michigan. So, you know, again, Charlotte's not winning the national championship, but they're also probably going to be a lot better than what people might expect. Some of the early season potential hurdles that you can't overlook on the way to those conference matchups that we talked about. Of course, that, that Michigan game as well is, is here this season. They lost to the Wolverines by one score in Ann Arbor last season. Maryland went eight and five a year ago. Back-to-back -back bowl wins now for the first time in a couple of decades. Here's Coach Loxley. Agreed to new contract terms yesterday. For the first time Maryland won eight games in the season since 2010. Brought in Josh Gaddis and Kevin Sumlin as co-offensive coordinators. He said that we always want to reach for a new higher standard. And next, as he told us, it's about beating Michigan and Ohio State on the schedule. And taking that next step and eventually winning Big Ten championships. Initial speed burst off the edge there from Ty Felton. Another part of what could be a dangerous receiving core, and they can use it in multiple ways. That's a Josh Gaddis special. Expect to see a lot of that this fall as a complimentary piece to the run game. Wide receiver reverses, jet sweeps. Flea flickers. He's got a great bag and rack of trick plays and gadget run plays. It was a big piece of his success when he was at Michigan a few years ago. Some space, more space for Ty Felton on the outside, shoved out of bounds as the red team tries to extend their lead in this fourth quarter. White team kind of needs a stop here, down four. Second and one coming up, so some situational football for your defense here. Trying to keep it a one-score game. Cameron Edge has made some nice throws on the previous yes. drive. A nice, a nice throw to the end zone to hit Tyrese Chambers for a touchdown. There, the wide field throw. Not, not every quarterback can make that throw just to get you in a second and manageable. Another quick throw that may have been partially deflected. Edge had other Big Ten offers such as Michigan State and Penn State. He was the 11th ranked QB in the class of 2022. Didn't play last year. But they feel he's one of the guys who's taken some really good strides. That room is in place. He's a redshirt freshman. So he's got a, a full career ahead of him as well. Again, where is that number 12? Because he loves Tom Brady. Here's a burst up the middle. Down the sideline. And this will be blown down. McDonald on the carry. Will give Bo Braid the tackle there. As he was in the vicinity, remember Braid is wearing the non-contact number two. They talk about McDonald like he's a starting running back. You know, of course, that's going to be Roman Hemby. But they say this guy McDonald, do not be surprised if he breaks off a 100-yard game a couple times throughout the season because he has that level of talent. Again, this running back room is extremely deep. It starts with Roman Hemby. We've seen Antoine Littleton. And then McDonald's getting in on the action down the sideline there. McDonald, another Maryland native. Here's a throw to the end zone. In and out of the hands of the intended target. Looking for Octavian Smith there. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have been in anyways. His foot was out of bounds. But I just love the offense, the aggression. They trust these guys downfield. They're willing to take those shots. Tavian Smith had a great bowl game to end the year as well. Another guy that that bowl game was a preview for the Maryland fans. You can go back and watch Jay Sean Jones, Ty Felton, Octavian Smith. Those guys all were showed some really nice things. And Octavian Smith on the final day of the regular season here against Rutgers. That was a dominant victory for Maryland. Had four catches, 79 yards. Notable because Rakim Jarrett didn't play in that game. So it was kind right. of his first look and perhaps window and what a larger role would look like without Jarrett, who of course is off to the NFL draft. Third and seven here. And Cameron Edge in at QB. Red team bleeding some clock. 
White team just wants another shot at this to keep it a one score game. It's a really nice read. Let's go down to Elise on the sideline. Yeah, with Roman Hemby, 12 yards short last year with 1,000. You were saying that's motivation for this year. Yep, I feel like it's always area for improvement. So um, I look, I take that as motivation, and I'm moving forward, and you know, I want to build on that this year. Yeah, what do you expect out of yourself in this year? Uh, just to help this team be successful. Um, we've been taking steps in the right direction every year so far that I've been here, and I want to take that next step. So uh, you know, being the guy that can be a leader for this team, leader for this offense, and just help us to you know compete for a Big Ten championship. New running backs coach Latrell Scott, what's it like? to have him in the room? Uh, you know, it's a change up. Um, he's definitely coming with a lot of things that's translating to the field. Um, we have a lot of drill work that trans that goes right onto the field. So um, I feel like I've been able to elevate my game so far this spring and I'm looking forward to summer camp. And just what's that running back room like this year? Oh uh, yeah, we got a lot of guys that can go. Um, you know, I feel like we have one of those backfields where anybody can go at any time. So, uh, you know, just being your brother's keeper and having your brother's back so we can go out here and win games. Roman, thanks so much. We made sure he wasn't in the series, guys, so he could, he could do this interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. McDonald in it back again. Has another good burst. Talked about the depth of that running back room. Of course, Roman Hemby will be one of the leaders this year. He and Antoine Littleton. Both just redshirt sophomores running behind a relatively newly constructed offensive line this year that they're trying to piece together. That's exactly right, Jason. That's the piece that's going to dictate this. If he wants to get to 1,000 yards, a lot of it's going to fall on the offensive line as Edge just throws it away there. So we know DJ plays. He's back. Probably could have left for the NFL this year. Was right tackle. Now he's moving to left tackle. Eric Harris started nine games. Now he's moving into an even bigger role at the center position. And then they got two new transfers from smaller schools. Corey Bullock, NC Central, two-time all-conference, but one name playing the other tackle spot, number 72, Gottlieb Ayedzi. Now, these are smaller school guys, but he actually had a senior bowl invite last year. So he was being looked at by NFL scouts. Basically, if you get a senior bowl invite, it means you will play at the next level. So even though they're coming from smaller schools, their names you may not recognize, they have pieces in place. It's about the cohesion and, and getting these guys familiar with each other so they can go block and open holes for all these talented running backs. They found some, some depth pieces, such as Connor Fagan, a, a former walk-on who has emerged. But they plan to dip into the portal as well to see what they can potentially add on to that unit. Meanwhile, third and goal for Edge. Big play for the white defense, and that should go down as a sack. It will. There he is again. That's big number five. Wayshawn Fuller might be the MVP of the entire day. Just flew up the middle. I mean, that's his fourth or fifth sack. Six, seven, tackle for loss. Disruptive. That's that's probably one of the best words you can give to these big bodies, the defensive linemen. Disruptive. 6'3, 270. So he's he's gonna be a tough guy to move, but he's shown some speed and quickness as well. 33-yard attempt here, and again, situational football for your defense. That's a big play from Fuller to try to keep this a one-score game. It is a one-score game still, so you set up your offense with a chance to get a crack in tying it. Or taking the lead if you go for two. But sets us up for a fun finish. Am I crazy or it looked like he might have missed that? Oh. We'll have to take another peek. Let's see. Here, let's take another look at it. Let's see. All right, I won't right, say oh, anything. It's, it's, ooh, it's on the edge. That's tight. It is tight. That's tight. All right, well, it makes for great theater and great drama, though. It does. That's what we love. Great theater and great drama. Chance to go down. You have to score to tie it up right now. It's the Billy Edwards show. Hey, he's had himself a good day. Talked about the games that he did start last season. Started two of them. Has experience in big spots. Played a key role in the Michigan game as well. They love him as the ultimate competitor. And again, as Jake mentioned, a guy who knows his role but doesn't accept the role in his preparation. He's always ready to be the starter. And you know he's excited to have the ball in his hands in a spot like this. Oh, 
two minute drill action here. Okay, here we go. Couple guys, he's been going to Leon Houghton Jr., number 16. Robert Smith had a touchdown earlier. Ryan Manning, the early enrollee freshman, wearing number 11. And then in the last two minute drill going into half, he went to his tight ends. Number 85, Preston Howard, had two big catches in their two minute drive. So he's got guys that he's built a connection with throughout the afternoon. It's a great situational, as you said, Jason, situational opportunity to work your two minute end of game offense. The guys you noted are out there. Leon Houghton at the bottom of your screen. They go up to gut with a big burst. It's Antoine Littleton. Breaching red team territory, rumbling and bumbling his way down to about the 38. It's a gain of 25. That's a big man running down the field. He looks like a semi truck frame, dense muscle, and once he gets downhill, he's tough to bring down. Edwards down the sideline, caught, touchdown! Leon Houghton, expedited two minute drill, Jake. Well, we call for it, right? Leon Houghton, he's, it's been his number all day. Initially, he's running a corner route there, and, and we'll, we'll get the replay. Well, it started really here with the Littleton run, right? Great blocking up front, running through the arm tackles. Boom, running, rumbling over a couple guys for extra yards. And then look at Billy Edwards. You just give him time, and he's going to put it on the money. Look at this catch over the shoulders by Leon Houghton Jr. for the touchdown. Two-minute drive. It was a two-second two second drive. drive. Yeah. <laughs> Now they're going to go for two to try to take the lead with 1.45 to go. They're playing for steak and lobster. They're not playing for ties. Very important. We, by the way, we did confirm the steak and lobster. Losers get the hot dog and beans. What, what would you prefer? That's a polarizing discussion. Yeah. I'd have to go steak and lobster, I think, it, at the end of the day. Hey, I, I ate hot dogs and beans growing up. It's a nice yeah, meal. It's, it's, it's a good it's a meal. meal. Good ah. comfort meal on a, on a rainy day, but. I think I prefer the steak and lobster as well. Did you have a steak two days in a row? You had one last night? Not two days in a row, two out of the past three days. And shout out to Coach Loxley. He's got a restaurant there in the new hotel in town. I can say it was, it was a steakhouse. So you're saying you've Red had steak. One, you've had it two out of the past three days. Steaks, yes. Yep. So there was another one that I didn't see. Yes. I cooked one uh, earlier this week on Wednesday in preparation for this game. <laughs> I wanted to act like the winner. I wanted us to act like the winner already of the broadcast. You were manifesting the end of game prize for whoever the winner ends up being. Yes, right sir. now it's the white team trying to take a lead going for two here. Billy Edwards at QB. Well protected. Now breaks down, he has to scramble. Edwards throwing across his body, tipped. Who will this come down ultimately to the turf? And it remains a one point red team lead. Drama at the end. You're told as a quarterback, never throw it across your body, never throw it back to the middle of the field. But in a two minute situation, you got to give your guy a chance. So Billy Edwards is throwing it up there, hoping someone could come down with it. A great job by a number of different red jerseys to bat that down. And Effectively, they, they feel like they can seal the win with a couple first downs here, now up by one, under two minutes left. White team only has one timeout left. That was fun. I mean, you go for the win, right? Playing winning football under Mike Loxley. 1.45 to go in this fourth quarter. Billy Edwards nearly was able to complete that drive and give them the lead, but ultimately remains a one-point game. That play perfectly sums up as we're winding down this game the afternoon, which it's the offense making some plays and then the defense responding. The defense coming out strong, the offense finding a way to fight. That time we were talking about a two-minute drive. Billy Edwards and Antoine Littleton move them right down the field and score very quickly. Then with their backs against the wall, the defense is able to come up and make a play to maintain the lead. Cool to see these games come down to the final couple of minutes. And to see the moxie of different players stepping up in those situations.
Now 145 left on this fourth quarter clock here in College Park. Annual red white game. It's been a competitive one. A fun one throughout. We've seen different names emerge. Some that were on the roster a season ago, some that weren't, some stepping into larger roles this season. Guys that stood out defensively, number five, Quayshawn Fuller. Number eight, Jordan Phillips, the new defensive tackle, Bo Braid, made some nice plays. Offensively, the wide receiver room looks excellent. Edge hands it off. McDonald, a couple of juke moves just prior to midfield. He goes down after a gain of 12. Romy, Roman Hemby led the first offense in the first half, but McDonald's coming on strong. And as we talked about earlier, a lot of this is going to fall on the offensive line. Look at that hole. The guy's passing off blocks, moving guys out of their position. Just, just watch the space he has to run right in there. Huh? If you're a running back, that's the perfect image you want to see so you can get downhill now. More whistles here. Coach Loxley out near midfield with the two sides. It's really cool to hear him and Elise down on the sideline earlier as he was going through what he didn't like and did like in the early stages. Asked Elise if she wanted to call a play at one point. <laughs> I asked him yesterday, I said, what are you putting in your beard? Is that the best beard in the Big Ten? He said he puts some beard oil and then he's got yeah. a uh, proprietary secret recipe. I'm gonna have to get that from him. You and Coach Loxley, the beard gurus. It's a fun <laughs> discussion after our football discussion yesterday. So even though Red's up, again, it's a spring game. You want to work these situations, especially for Cameron Edge. They are running tempo. Nice hit from Tajay Johnson there. Another quick, twitchy guy. One of the... New faces that they uh, they want to step in. He did play in eight games last season, with perhaps a larger role this year. Edge dumps it off to McDonald's, cut down promptly. Nice job by Cameron Edge, understanding again the situation. You're up one. The last thing you can do is turn the ball over, or make a mistake. The white defense just drops back in a deep zone coverage. He says, fine, I'll just live to fight another day, check it down to my running back, and make sure I don't make any bad decisions. Looks like Billy Edwards scored in about 25 seconds last drive. Let's see if he can do it again. Brendan Segovia. We'll have another crack at it. 35 seconds. That uh, quick, quick two-minute drive was exactly two plays in 26 seconds for 40 yards last time they had it. 40-yard TD pass to Leon Houghton. Brian Manning with the fair catch. Can they even perhaps get their group just down in a field goal range here? Another fun situation to examine. And... I, as a head coach, I wonder if Loxley's saying, let's see if we can get into field goal position because they just lost a great one in Ryland and number 47, Harrison Beatty. You know, you, you can't mimic these kind of things, but just like a game when there's pressure on the line, there's steak and lobster on the line. I wonder if you can get field goal position and see how he reacts in a pressure situation. Last time we saw Maryland in game action in that Duke's Mayo Bowl, it was Chad Ryland who extended what was a one-point lead to four points, which ultimately gave him the cushion to wrap up that bowl game victory. Meanwhile, Edwards will scramble. We know he can do this as well. Billy Edwards, 31 GD carries, 144 yards last season. Clock is at 20 seconds and ticking at 18. They speed things up here. This might be our last play. Vertical threats downfield, coming back to the football and making the grab okay. along the far sideline there is Robert Smith, who's had a nice day. Clock on our, our board has expired. We'll see what they do here, though. This second unit of receivers, I mean, really, the, the, the receiver group as a whole has had a great day. This second group, for being considered the second group, they, they've done some really nice things. Robert Smith with a touchdown earlier, a nice catch in a big moment there. 
We saw Leon Houghton score the touchdown last drive. And we'll see what they're giving them. Two seconds, we're being told. Hail Mary situation, it looks like. Robert Smith at the bottom of the screen. Now everyone's vertical. Edwards going to get a heave off. <laughs> Would have gone down. So the red team comes out victorious. All in good fun. 20 to 19, the final in this red white game. Some good situational aspects down the stretch. Fun back and forth as this Maryland program continues to build and build with back to back bowl victories over the last two years. There's Deontay Banks, who was drafted by the Giants. We got to see some players who could potentially step into the role that he left. Of course, Talia Tungavailoa, the returning starter at QB. All pieces that will be pivotal moving forward. We send it down to Elise with Coach. Coach, some good back and forth there. Had to end it on a Hail Mary. What'd you like today? Well, it was a good, obviously, the way it ended, competitive, and that's what you want to see. I thought Billy did a good job there at the end, putting his team in position to where they were two points away from being able to have a chance to win the game. So, you know, we got out uh, pretty much healthy for the most part. Uh, it was really competitive, and that's what you really want to see in the spring game. Competitive, what stuck out to you the most besides that among your players? Well, I think the big thing is our defense didn't give up a lot of big plays. Offensively, I thought after the first quarter, we really kind of got into a rhythm. You know, we didn't have the kicking game involved as much because we wanted to just go out and, like I said, showcase and try to just play with great fundamentals. We know the winner gets steak and lobster. Yeah. The loser gets hot dog and beans. Do you get the steak and lobster? You know what? I'm on both teams, so I'll have steak, lobster, beans, and uh, and, and weenies. But, you know, half these guys don't even like steak and lobster, so they, they much rather the beans and weenies anyway. More for you. Coach, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks, Elise. Appreciate you. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Elise. That's a pretty good deal, I'd say. Jake, always a pleasure, my friend. Likewise. That was a fun one, Jason. I mean, it, spring games, you never know what you're going to get. But like Coach Loxley said, competitive coming down the wire. You couldn't ask for much more. Certainly was fun. A fun day in College Park. That'll wrap it up. Don't forget, coming up at 3 Eastern, Rutgers spring football gets underway. For our entire outstanding crew, Jake Butt, Elise Meneker, producer Glenn Hallas, I'm Jason Ross Jr. saying so long.